Cool. Hi, uh, I'm IDK. I normally work with the ITP project. Um, also work a little bit on IPFS, and I'm here today to talk about mostly what I've been doing with a uh, with I guess a Monero linked project called I2P0. Um, <laughs> I'm not sure how closely you guys develop with them, but I think that they work with you pretty closely. Mostly about what uh, I2P0 is, but mostly about what I what I did with it and what I think uh, other people can learn from uh, what I did with it. Um, and I, I call it tricky bundles. Um, so I2P's got sort of, uh, a bunch of different di uh, distributions and they all connect you to this overarching thing that we call the invisible internet and the core job i2p router has this kind of this long standing we all kind of sign up for where you have to install java and a number of uh, dependencies in advance of actually uh, actually using it, and uh, it ends up being about 25 clicks from uh, standard Windows 10 installation to uh, having a working I2P uh, router and browser on top of that. Um, but on the other hand, you get a whole bunch of other stuff uh, with it, and uh, all these things are sort of intended as kind of application primitives for um, for building things uh, with I2P, but they also prevent, present um, user interfaces that can be kind of uh, that can be kind of adapted to existing apps as well. Um, for example, we have a BitTorrent client, and we have uh, I2P tunnel and things like that. Um, you know, but the, obviously the problem with this is that it's pretty difficult to install for new folks, and that's uh, the problem that I2P0 uh, addresses. But there's another problem. Um, oh, man. Uh, what I, uh, let me back up a moment. Um, the other, the, I, I like to refer to Java I2P as sort of the core utils of I2P in that it provides everything that you need, but not a lot of people use core utils directly. They mostly use their file for that. Um, it, you know, it's all kind of wrapped around that if it is involved at all. Um, where, and, and so, it kind of begs the question, um, should we be building out of tree apps that uh, incorporate I2P uh, as a way of providing them with something that they need? And I say something that I need that they need because um, we're not, anonymity is a big part of what we do, uh, but it's not the only thing that we can do for you a little bit more later. Okay. Um, and but, but there's a problem, and the problem is this 25-step installation procedure, um, which again, uh, I2P0 solves. Uh, that, let me back up again for a moment here. Um, <laughs> I'm not a great public speaker all the time. The, uh, because I2P is written in Java, which is obviously the JVM, I call for it to call between uh, non-JVM languages. So if somebody wants to write their application in something uh, a little more popular than Java these days, like say, uh, for, for at least maybe getting started, uh, like Python, um, then they have to count on somebody to resolve this dependency uh, for them. And the bottom line is this kind of stuff because it means that most everybody who, uh, who might install your app is, uh, is going to fail 
before they even get started because it's, you know, it, because they have to install I2P. Um, so, you know, I'm just reiterating a bunch of reasons what you probably already thought of that are, are, uh, are good reasons to make something like I2P zero, which you guys obviously already understand. Um, But it also elucidates something about our architecture, which is that apps and routers are not tightly are not tightly coupled. Um, you join the network, and your app requests resources from the network in the form of tunnels or destinations or bandwidth or whatever. But the actual interaction with the network that's all kind of abstracted away and handled by the router, which is great. Um, especially in the case of SAM, makes things very easy. Um, is that there are kind of a lot of applications that are not going to be distributed through, uh, say, Debian main. Um, they're going to be written by people who who wrote them independently, and uh, they're going to have kind of rapid development cycles sometimes. They're going to be distributed by anonymous people who can't maybe buy certificates sometimes. Um, and all of this gets pretty complicated. Um, so I think that we should develop a new set of best practices for embedding I2P routers in apps that are not necessarily I2P routers themselves. Um, so an I2P zero solves this uh, solves this issue. It only really solves the dependency on Java issue. It doesn't actually dissolve or resolve the uh, the capabilities of the I2P router in question. Um, so I took a stab at making that job a lot easier. Um, now, I want to, to talk about why this might be uh, desirable. There are um, there are two sort of broad categories of I2 of out of P, tree I2P apps that um, are that that relate to the problem in question, and there are, there are ones that bundle I2P uh, themselves and ones that don't. And uh, there is a torrent client that bundles a whole I2P router inside of it. Uh, they release. Every time uh, it is a it, it, it's a complete implementation that uh, works by linking to our Java libraries, and if you install it on a um, on a machine where there's a an I2P router already, you end up with two running I2P routers. Even though this piece of software actually has the capability to use the existing I2P router and thus less resources. Um, but you have to go in and do it in the advanced configuration. Uh, and seeing whether or not there's an I2P router capable of working with our app before we actually do it, or before we actually um, start our own embedded I2P router. Got a little ahead of my slides here. So how do we prevent this? Well, what we've got to do is we've got to probe for different I2P capabilities. And uh, it turns out that there is, but I don't think any of them are necessarily 100% reliable. So I like to, um, I like to take into account uh, each and every one of them in sequence here. Um, First of all, we can check and see if I2P is installed to the default paths. Obviously, this breaks if it's installed to a non-default path. 
Um, so we can have a little rule in there that uh, maybe looks for it in a portable installation under a specific directory, but we can't handle every single thing this way. Uh, moreover, it doesn't actually give us information about whether I2B is running or not. Uh, it's a useful thing to know, but it is not a um, it, it is not in and of itself enough information for us to use. Uh, we can look at the output of PS. Uh, it's simple enough to do on every platform. Uh, it gives us information about the installed state and the running state, uh, but it doesn't give us any information about the APIs that are, are available, at least not without some extra effort, and really only on Java I2B as far as I know. It might not apply to um, I2BD. But it is. Um, also, some systems, GR security, uh, will limit the output of PS by user, and obviously if it's service install, you can't do that there, so it's brittle there too. Um, so the next thing, uh, and where it gets a little bit more interesting, is we check for a usable I2CP or SAM v3 port. And this doesn't have to be complicated. Um, in terms of I2CP, there aren't a lot of libraries that implement the whole specification in other languages, so you probably will end up using SAM. Um, that, uh, that said, though, there's also a command line tool that'll do this that I wrote as part of this project. Um, this gives you a lot more information about I2P, tells you that it's running, it gives you the opportunity to create a destination and validate that you are in fact talking to who you're talking who you think you're talking to. Um, that said though, uh, SAM v3 is not enabled by default on the core Java I2P router, so it might fail in that case too, but you'll always have an I2CP port and that will always work. And then the last thing is to check, check uh, proxy.i2p. And this is just an HTTP request over localhost 4444, just like the uh, regular um, the Java I2p proxy uses for when you're configuring your browser, you know, taking something over curl or, what, or whatever, um, to proxy.i2p, which is a loopback address. And, um, as a uh, it, it uh, what it'll reply with is either proxy is ready or proxy is not ready. You know, tunnels need to be built or whatever. And um, and, and that gives you almost as much information as the uh, as as talking to I2CP just for one request back and forth to validate that I2P is there, and it it'll work everywhere. Um, so once you've established that there's an I2P router uh, running or not, I think that this should roughly be the, uh, uh, the uh, when you start your application. So you should check for the presence of a running I2P router first and then probe for the API capabilities that you want. If all you need is an HTTP proxy, only ask for the HTTP proxy. Um, if all you need is SAM, only ask for SAM. And, uh, and once that comes back, you'll either, either know whether, uh, whether the API is available or not, just start your application. If not, um, check the default paths for I2P, at, uh, for an I2P router that's already installed by the user before we got there. Uh, if it's available, try and start it. If it's not available, go to the next step. If you, if, uh, if you can't discover an I2P router, go ahead and unpack a copy of I2P0. Um, Start I2P0, then immediately start SAM. Use that to establish any tunnels for your application. And I'll get to why in just a second. 
Now, uh, I glossed over some details in this slide about waiting for uh, certain things to become available. I would like to uh, available for you to review because these are next to impossible to read on this TV, and I'm sorry for that. Now, uh, there's still a problem with this approach in terms of the resources. It's not currently possible to run SAM freestanding of the uh, of the either the Java uh, I2P or uh, C++ I2PD routers. Um, that said, though, I2P0 is pretty darn close. Um, we can live with that for a while until I get until uh, until unbundled SAM v3 is a working thing. Um, so what I created out of this is uh, is called Go Zero and Zero Bundle, which is a library that supports it, and it all all it does is treats I2P. Zero is a static resource, handles installation, start, stop, and management on behalf of the I2P router, or uh, the I2PD router, rather, from a Go application. Uh, these also all correspond to command line interfaces, that, or uh, command line interface apps, rather, that you can use to uh, manage an I embedded I2P. Just about any kind of app, um, because we can generate a .a file and link it to a C program. Uh, it's huge. It will add some overhead to your app because that's is, so that is a bit of a drawback. Um, but it is exactly the same overhead uh, that you would have added in another place had you bundled I2P zero with your app as a zip, which of course is also valid and possible to do with. Uh, go zero. Um, I2, I2CP check uh, is sort of a re envisioned piece of the core utils puzzle for people who want to uh, bundle I2P routers with their application in a zip file, uh, in particular I2P zero. They um, what they do is they do this API probing and path probing to detect pre-existing I2P routers or determine if I2P routers are ready. So if you want to build a launcher script uh, for your I2P enabled app, but don't want to actually embed it inside of the app, then you can use these to do all your discovery and API uh, probing needs. And then lastly, the thing that I am uh, beginning to build with this is a replacement for a somewhat ill-fated uh, I2P browser project. Uh, for those of you that don't know, we uh, attempted to build an I2P browser uh, toward the beginning of last, e or last year, uh, worked on it for about a year and concluded that the Mozilla code base was moving a little too fast for us to keep up and also develop the Java I2P router at the same time. Um, so I, was, I spent my time looking for ways to, uh, ways to make that process a little bit easier for us to manage, and this was part of what I came up with. Um, because we're so decoupled from the applications uh, themselves, I believe that this, uh, this probing is kind of a necessary process. We actually multiple I2P routers on the same machine uh, during the I2P browser process. And at the time, I was developing on an Acer Aspire C720 with four gigs of RAM. Uh, it was not fun. It was very challenging. Um, and, and so that was, uh, that was a thing that we needed that we never got around to doing in that one, but which I this project. Um, I really want to see I2P0 in all the things. I want to see it in every app that uses I2P right now that does not 
uh, does not bundle a router with it. Um, I think that it stands a really good chance of uh, smoothing over our, uh, our, our install issues. And if done properly, we don't ever have to worry about using too many resources on the um, and uh, well, I think that is that is about the end of what I have. Um, if there are any questions, I. See them in the Jitsi, maybe? Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. I'm looking to see if there's any questions. I don't see any on YouTube or uh, IRC. Thank you so much. I'm looking to see if there's I also don't see them on uh, Discord either. Let me Looks like it was pretty self explanatory. <laughs> Yeah, nothing too complicated here. Very, you know, very useful from my point of view, but nothing, uh, nothing terribly complicated in this presentation. Got it, got it. Um, okay, I guess, how familiar are you with um, the efforts to like integrate I2P uh, in Monero in a deeper level? I know it's integrated in uh, you know, through I2P0 uh, with the uh, Monero, uh, Monero Daemon and Monero CLI to some extent. Um, are, you, are you aware of those efforts? Do you communicate with anyone that works on those projects? Uh, I've been, uh, I... ...myself with those efforts, I would say. Uh, I've been getting myself more familiar with them over the past uh, two months as our browser project is kind of, um, well, my browser project at this point, it's a mistake to identify it with I2P uh, exactly at this point, because this is something I did on the weekend. Um, but yeah, I've been familiarizing myself with the process there, and I think uh, actually the it's to making, making some suggestions, it could be scripted already. Uh, but I'm not sure that that's something that, that is, uh, something that people want to do yet. Okay, cool. I don't see any other questions coming in. Do you know when you post your slides anywhere? Um, I don't have them up yet, but I will put them up as soon as the presentation's over. I got to reboot this other laptop. <laughs> got it, got it. I'm wrapping up my uh, trivia thing that's on right after this. I'm, I'm writing a last final question. Mm -hmm. Let's see. Okay. All right. Well, um, if, if no one else has any questions, you know, gave it a bit of time. Um, well, then I'm going to say thank you so much, IDK, for joining us. It was, it was great to have you describe what you've been working on. And it, it's always good to hear what other privacy projects are going on. I know it was really useful for me to have known what I2P was before I learned about crypto, because we've had these decentralized systems out for a while. Mm -hmm. And sort of people are like, oh, Bitcoin is the only decentralized thing, and they kind of forget everything else exists for, <laughs> in a comical a sense. <laughs> I think the community yeah. can definitely learn a lot from looking at I2P uh, just because you've been around forever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 
almost they, they they'd be uh we could if it were a person we could vote <laughs> it's about 18 years now crazy crazy stuff all right well thank you so much um